let's put some of our AC power calculations into use and discuss what might be the power delivered to a particular load. So in this example here, we have a voltage source with a source resistor. And what we would like to know is what is the total power delivered to this load right here, that resistor and that inductor. And to give ourselves a couple values, let's say that our voltage source, again, because it's an AC source and it's time varying, is 10 cosine of 10 to the fifth T. Our source resistor here will be 100 ohms. The regular resistor, which is part of the load, will be 300 ohms. And then our inductor will be 3 millihenries. So to figure out the power delivered to the load, what we're going to want to know is sort of what is the current through here. Um, you generally always want to find the current flowing through something because then you can say the current squared times the reactive bit and the resistive bit, and that will give you the total, the total current. So step number one here is going to be what is the current flowing through this circuit. And again, we should recall that in AC analysis, I'm going to take each of these objects and turn them into their phasor domain equivalents. And so the total current flowing through this circuit is going to be the voltage applied across the entire circuit divided by the entire equivalent impedance of the circuit. And for this particular setup that we have, the impedance is that of the source resistor, the load resistor that's there, and then the impedance of the inductor. And so with these values, we can start to plug in a couple things. And so if we transform our source into its polar form, that would be 10 e to the j zero. So our phase here, because it's not specified in the problem, is just going to be zero. And so I'm going to write it here so that you can see it, but just know that there's, there's really, there's no phase because it's not specified. Now, the impedance of the source resistor is just going to be its value, so that's going to be 100. And the impedance of the load resistor is going to be 300. And then recall that the impedance for an inductor is JWL. And so for this particular example, W is 10 to the 5. That was the frequency that was given up here. And our impedance is 3, 10 to the negative 3 Henry's. And so the total value for our impedance is going to be 3 times 10 to the 2, which is going to be 300J. So our impedance for our inductor is going to be 300J. And the totality for all of this, when we all write it all together, it will be 10 divided by 400 plus 300J. Now, again, we're going to have the common problem of this is in a somewhat polar form and this is in a rectilinear form. And so we need to take care when we're doing our conversion between all of our different values. But if we take the bottom component and turn it into a polar format, that will be 500 e to the j, 36.8 degrees, so 36.8 degrees. And writing all of this out, you will get 0.02 e to the negative j, 36.8 degrees. And this will be in amps. So step one of this is finding out what the current is flowing through this load. And we found that it's a 20 milliamp load and it's out of phase by 36 degrees. Now that we've found the current flowing through this resistor and this inductor, so our resistor here and our inductor here, the, the total power delivered to a load is going to be its average power plus its reactive power. And for any sort of load, the average power that's going to be delivered is the RMS value of the current times the total amount of the resistive elements. And so for this particular circuit, we know we only have one resistor here, which is just R. And now we need to figure out what the RMS current is. The important thing to realize about this is that when we write our current expression like this, this is I of M. And so we can now that we have the magnitude of our current, we can divide it by the square root of two to figure out what the RMS value is. So we can replace I RMS here with I M square root of two squared times R. 
And when we plug in our various values, IM is going to be 0 0.02, and R for this particular value is 300, because that is our resistor that sits inside of that load that we care about. And so the total value here for finding the uh, real power, or the average power, is going to be 0 0.06 watts, which is the same thing as 60 milliwatts. So remember the units for real power is in terms of watts. Now on the second half of this we can find our reactive power and so the reactive power is the IRMS, so the RMS current squared times the reactive load and so the reactive load is all of the impedances that are contributed based upon the inductors and capacitors and so everything that's in this circuit that is reactive is just going to be that inductor. So we can write our expression here, again taking into account the RMS current. We have the magnitude squared, and this will be JWL for our values. And in here, we, we just need the actual value of the component, and so we're going to drop J. And so it'll just be WL for our inductors, because that's the total inductive load of the circuit. And so again our values here are going to be 0 0.02 for our magnitude current. W here is going to be 10 to the 5 because that is our frequency and L is going to be 3 millihenries and the resulting reactive load is 60 milli. So actually let me write this out as a decimal it will be 0 0.06 but again remember the units for a reactive load are VARs and so it will not be watts but it will be in volts amps reactive so it's 0 0.06 VARs which you could also write as 60 millivar and so the total the total load that is delivered to this object is 60 milliwatts in terms of real power and 60 millivars in reactive power. And the fact that both of these quantities are the same magnitude should tell you that the phase angle for this, so a particular phase angle for this is, is right here at about 45 degrees because these are both sort of equal components. So you've got 60 on one axis and 60 on the other axis.